So to characterize the, the graph structure at multiple scales, and this is what you just brought up, right? If you have multiple scales, so you have like big providers and you have like, like big companies like uh, Google and Facebook, and then you have like very small companies. So uh, here you can analyze your graph at multiple scales. So one can decompose the graph into K-core modules, okay? And this was proposed by um, Seidman in uh, 1983. So you guys can also check the paper. So the idea is that nodes with degree less than K are removed until all remaining nodes in the network have at least K connections. So the definition of a K core is that all nodes in the K core, they will have um, at least, you know, like uh, K connections or more. Okay, so that's fine. Having more is okay, but the minimum degree of a node in a K core is K connections, okay, it's of K. So a K core basically is defined or can be considered as a subgraph where all nodes have a degree of at least K, okay? So, and the K core is, of course, it's highly, it has a set of, it's a set of highly interconnected nodes. Now, how do we define this? So I'm going to uh, read this, define the steps, and then we will apply it, you guys will apply it to an example, okay? How to extract the different K cores of a graph. So the first step is, let's say uh, we want to extract uh, the first, the two core. So we remove all nodes with degree one, which means we need to keep the nodes with degree two or more, okay? So recalculate, so we need to recalculate the degree of the remaining nodes and only nodes V with a degree uh, strictly greater than one will be retained to define the two core of the graph, okay? Now, for example, if we want uh, nodes with a degree less or equal than two, so uh, their edges should also be, uh, sorry, for the nodes with the degree equal, less or equal to two, we should also remove them if we want to define the three cores. So this is quite simple, right? You're, you're, it's like just iterative. And then to define the four core, we remove the nodes with degree uh, equal or uh, smaller or equal to three. Okay, so we're gonna keep only the nodes with degree uh, four or higher, okay, in the four core in this graph. So at each step, if, this is important to remember, so if at each step, if the removal of a node and its edges causes the degree of one of its neighbors to drop below K, then that neighbor is also removed from the graph, okay? So it's quite simple. Now, let's look how we do this here. So I would like you guys to, uh, Try to find the two core of this graph, okay? So two core, it means you're going to remove the nodes. Uh, so maybe this one we can work it out together and then I'll give you another example. Let's do this together, okay? So this is quite simple. So to find the two core, the rule is like to remove the nodes with degree one. And here I'm removing these nodes. And actually, this is, you know, the, the two core of the network, okay? And it has, like, all nodes in this network. It has, like, a, a degree equal or less to two, okay? So we agree on that. Now, if I want the nodes, uh, the three core, so I need to remove nodes with degree two, okay? So, for example, I remove this one. And then what do you know this? This one has a degree of one, so I need to remove it too. And then degree of two, and then I remove it too. So here, so what do you guys know this? There is no three core because it just, you know, disappeared. So you don't have like a three core. It's like the maximum is two core in this network. Now, uh, let's look at this example. Find the K cores of the graph below. For We start with simple, right? For K equals to one, two, and three. And I will give you guys uh, two minutes. I would like you to find the cores, the three different cores. One core, two core, and three core. And then you're going to notice a pattern. You're going to notice something and tell me what you guys notice, okay? So in the one core, you are allowed to keep the notes with degree one. You can spot them, but you're allowed to keep them, right? 
It means like you're keeping the nodes with a degree greater or equal to one. Now things start happening when you have k equals two. Okay, so we have one core. Now if you want to find the two cores, so these are the, the nodes with degree one. So the one core is basically the whole uh, graph, right? Now if we do two core, we need to remove all nodes with degree uh, less, or, less than two, okay? So degree one here. So let me do this. So I'm moving, removing, isolating these guys. And then uh, what do you know this? This guy now, right, right here, it has a degree of one, so I need to remove it too, right? Okay, now, now uh, we have discovered the two cores. So this is a two core, okay? And then if I want to do the, the three core, I need to remove all nodes uh, with degree less than three. So this node, uh, let me just do it. So this node, I'll remove it, okay, and also, well, this node, and then these nodes too. So these, I have removed them. Then these guys have a degree of three. So this is three core, okay? So you guys understand how we do that. Now let's look, this is it. So we have the one core, the two core, and the three core uh, um, uh, decomposition of your graph. Now what do you guys know this? What is the relationship between the K plus one core and the K core? The K plus one is subgraph of the K core. Okay, so that's easy. So is a subgraph of the K core. And another Key question here. So if you look, uh, we can also define what we call a node coreness. So that's a measure that quantifies the participation of a node to the network core. So to the, the for example, the participation of this node to core three. Now, if you look globally at this network, let's look at centrality measures, okay? And coreness, like node coreness. What kind of relationship can we derive? Or what do you guys think? Do you think that, well, if uh, if a node 
belongs to uh, a chord, like a set of notes belongs belong to a particular chord, which since they are by nature you know highly connected, okay, interconnected, would you expect them to be the most central nodes uh, in the network? Does it automatically imply that? Think about it. Look at this example. So we know that they were highly interconnected, but they are, are they the most central nodes in the network? Now, for centrality, we have different things. You can think about betweenness centrality, right, uh, in terms of shortest paths. So let's look at betweenness centrality, for example, uh, right here, or closeness centrality. So if you look at these four, the, the green ones, do you guys think that they have the same importance in the network, the same centrality in the network? No. So you can see that these guys, maybe this one, okay, well, these are mostly, like, slightly more important at least than this one, right? We all agree on that. So not all nodes that belong to the same core, although they, ha they are highly interconnected, they might not have the same centrality in the whole network, okay? So, right, now... Things to reflect on more. So how can we measure the node coreness in a K-core? Uh, in a, in a K-core? How can we possibly measure the node coreness? I gave you some hints. So any ideas? So the, the node coreness, what is its definition? It's the measure. It's a measure that quantifies the participation of a node to the network core or its importance, how important it is or how a highly connected is to, um, you know, within the network core. So what kind of measures can we possibly uh, use based on what we saw in the previous lectures to define the, quantify the coreness of a node? So, so here, for example, let's look at the two core, okay? So there are some, we can, for each of those nodes in the two core, right, we want to define what we call a coreness index or a coreness, coreness measure, okay? What kind of measure can we define? Possibly, just give me ideas. Guys, come on, so simple. We have like a subgraph, right? This is a two two core subgraph. This is my new subgraph. I can call it G1. And what I can do, I can just compute the centrality within these, you know, just within that subgraph, like just locally, just to the core, or within the core. Okay, so that's one way, like, or maybe the degree. Okay, so you can define the coreness or the importance based on uh, degree centrality, based on other, you know, centrality measures. Okay, so that's one simple way. Okay. So we can use something we saw before and say, okay, now I'm focusing just on this core and I can, you know, uh, basically look at it locally and like just quantify the coreness based on centrality. Okay, now here is the thing. So if we use centrality measures to index coreness, now not all measures are suitable. For example, a node with high between the centrality and a very low degree is unlikely to belong to an inner K core of a graph. So be, because it's gonna be removed, right? Right, if it has a very low degree, degree of one, although it's ha it has a very uh, high between the centrality, right? You guys look at this case. So then in that case, this cannot be uh, a very good measure of uh, coreness. So what's gonna happen if we do try to extract the, the two core of this network? So the most, a bit, if you guys remember, the node with the highest between the centrality is number seven. It lies between all of them. So it's like very central, lies uh, on the shortest path connecting uh, all possible pairs of nodes, okay? Uh, now, if we remove, let's remove one by one. So see what's going to happen. So we're removing all these guys with no degrees of one, okay? I'm going one by one. So removing... Removing all of those. Now I'm trying to find those belonging to. Uh, I'm trying to discover the two core of this graph. What's happening? There is no. Okay. See. So this is what it means. So sometimes you know this. You know, like you might have a very important node between us is very high, but there is at there is no its coordinates is like null. Okay. 
Great, so uh, now generalization to S4. What is an S4? So to generalize what so far we looked only at um, unweighted graphs, okay? So just we looked at degree, but we can generalize this to weighted graphs where we look, you guys know that the generalization of a degree to a weighted graph is what? Strength, right? The strength of a node. So in weighted networks, an S4 decomposition uh, defines the S-score of a graph comprising all nodes with a strength greater than S. Okay, so this is even another way of defining an S-score. So now here is the question. Do you think that S-scores and K-cores of a graph converge? Like let's say you have a weighted graph, okay? And then in that weighted graph, you might have, uh, you, can, you can consider it as, uh, you can just look at the degree, so simple. So any weighted graph, you can... Uh, you can completely ignore the thickness of the edge, the strength of the connection. So here's strength maybe, I don't know, like uh, seven. This one is like strength three, right? But still the degree, if you look at the, the cores, you're gonna consider just the degree. So in this case, it's like two, one, and one, right? But then if you look at the strength, uh, and if you do the S score decomposition, do you think that these two will be identical or no? No, yes. So basically, uh, there are, in this paper published in 2013, uh, this paper introduced the uh, S4 network decomposition, and it's, they generalized basically the K-core analysis to weighted network. So you can see like, you know, how people have built these concepts over time, step by step, it's very interesting. And they keep building on that up to this point. So uh, here, we can look at this graph, and I'll give you one minute to read the, uh, the caption and see the, S core and K core decomposition. So this is like obviously a, uh, we have here a weighted graph, right? So the weights matter. This one is like uh, unweighted. And you can see that at the end, the cores are very different. The patterns that emerge when uh, we use, uh, you know, strength or versus to degree, they're very different. Okay, so this is the, this depends solely on the data, on the problem, how you're formalizing it, what you're interested in, uh, whether it, it is more appropriate for your problem to use K core or S core. It totally depends on the problem, on the data. Okay, so right.